Hey, good morning, Mumbai, and namaste from Make My Trip. Naam to sunahi hoga, and at least that is what I would like to believe uh, that several of you in the audience would have interacted with one of our brands, uh, Make My Trip, Go Ibibo, or Red Bus, whenever you thought of travel. Uh, and if you've not tried it, I would urge you to try it. Give it a try, if not for the sake of Make My Trip. At least do it for the sake of AWS and see if it's working, if it's really working on AWS or not. Uh, there's no better proof than proof of the pudding, right? So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, quick glimpse of where we come from, some, some stuff on the history. Uh, so uh, founded in 2000, been around for 19 years. For most, if not all of the 19 years, we have been the market leaders. Uh, listed on NASDAQ in uh, 2010, and in 2017, uh, two years ago, merged with Goai, Bebo, and Redbus. Interesting journey overall, but the best is yet to come. And this is why I say the best is yet to come, because uh, if you look at the air traffic growth, the number of passengers, it has doubled in the last five years. Uh, the trajectory on the international also is more or less similar. So huge opportunity there. Uh, in terms of hotels, the numbers are a bit off, uh, a bit dated, uh, but only 20% of the transactions are happening online. 80% uh, is still happening offline. So huge uh, untapped potential over there as well. Uh, we've talked about this. So uh, you would realize that it's time to focus more on the market growth and capture the growth as much as possible. Before I get into the uh, infrastructure and uh, into the operational aspects, I would like to give you some nuances of the travel segment. Uh, first of all, it's a low-frequency use case. Typical person sitting in the audience, I'm sure you would travel once in three months and take one or two vacations with your families in the year. But when you do that, you spend a lot of money traveling, which is why uh, it's a high average transaction value is pretty high. Uh, people are circumspect. You would like to do a lot of researching, a lot of browsing, a lot of comparison shopping. For our app, it means that there are multiple sessions before the shopping and the browsing converts into a transaction. Puts pressure on the infrastructure for sure. I mean, there's more load on the system, on, on the infra. Uh, from time to time, I mean, the uh, traffic is also bursty. It's spiky traffic. Uh, airlines will run the flash sale. Hotel chains will run their own sales. Banks will run their offers. Uh, time to time, we do our own promotions and app fests to induce more demand. So there's a lot of spike that comes. A lot of bursty traffic comes into the system. Now, when you're running your own data center, you plan for the peak, but that peak never gets utilized. So uh, challenges because of that as well. The last thing that I want to touch upon here is the perishable nature of the inventory that we sell. This is not something that we buy and keep in our warehouse, and uh, then when you refund or return it, it comes back to the warehouse. The intrinsic value or the cost of the product remains the same. That is not how it works. If a plane flies with an empty seat, uh, that inventory is lost forever. It never comes back into the system. You've lost money on that. If a hotel has a room which is unoccupied for the night, uh, that is lost inventory again. So it perishes completely, uh, gone from the system. So uh, there's a lot more paranoia on the part of the suppliers to make sure that the inventory is used as much as possible. Uh, uh, and then uh, because of the perishable nature, there are pressures on the engineering side as well. Uh, first of all, the price and inventory, that is very dynamic. So uh, you've, most of you would have experienced it on the funnel. Uh, while the buying experience also, I mean, we try to get as much from the suppliers, so the connectivity to suppliers is important. There are hundreds of suppliers on the back end that we remain connected to to keep our price and availability current so we don't have to suffer in terms of price changes while you are shopping. Refund and cancellations are also very complex because of the perishable nature of the inventory. So that adds to the complexity of the system overall, fundamentally on the connectivity side and keeping things current. On top of that, obviously, you have airline disruptions, airlines going out of business, uh, lack of shortage of pilots because of which the flights are grounded. Uh, so a lot of complexity on the refund cancellation side also, increasing load on the 
infrastructure as well as on the processes. On the tech side, again, there are a few more things that we are doing over the last few years. The biggest initiative that all of us are doing in the Make My Trip group, uh, Make My Trip Boy, Bubo, and Red Bus, is that we are trying to personalize the experience for our shoppers. So the objective, the vision is that everyone should see a different set of recommendations for flights, hotels, holidays, whatever you're buying on our sites, uh, completely customized for you. That, on, in terms of infrastructure, that means more load on the system in terms of computational complexity, because we are running a lot of data models, doing a lot of data crunching. A lot more persuasions happen on the supply side insights. So, uh, for instance, uh, uh, last aisle seat left in the plane, that has to be real time. Last room available in Goa with a beach side view. So all of these computations happen, more and more computational complexity is required, uh, putting heavy demands on the infra. Uh, when you're shopping for a hotel uh, or a holiday, you would like to see more and more UGC, more photographs, more pictures, more videos when you're doing holiday planning. So again, storage has to be provisioned for all of this. So now I'll get into the infra and the challenges that we had. We were running two data centers, uh, one from Mumbai, one in Chennai. Uh, started several years ago when hardwares and networks were flaky. Uh, so uh, we had an active, active setup. Most of you would be software engineering folks in this room. You would understand the complexity of having an active, active architecture. One of the things that I would like to underline here is you provision for the peak, but Typical utilization, I mean, if you're very lucky, it will be in the low 20s. I have worked in organizations, large organizations earlier, where the utilization has been close to 6 to 8% as well. That always plays at the back of your mind when you're planning your strategy, tech strategy and the investments. It's not about money all the time. And the last bit that I want to touch upon, because all of your hardware typically is provisioned for usual traffic and to handle the peaks. That so you have almost nothing left for experimentation. That is the biggest problem with having your own site because every experimentation needs additional provisioning. You have to provision more and more every time you want, have to do an experiment. That becomes difficult. So uh, based on, I mean, the challenges that we are seeing, first of all, the market is growing. You have to keep pace and keep ahead of the market. And uh, the use cases that we are shipping out is more data incentive, in, in, incentive uh, and uh, more and more of storage. Uh, is required, more network bandwidth, more I.O. bandwidth. So all the, the uh, intensity of all of these things actually spurred us towards AWS. I'll talk about the process first, how we did the migration, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, the benefits. We chose an all-in migration, which all lock, stock, and barrel. You've heard that story before as well. Uh, but when we did that, we did one line of business at a time. Uh, we started with one of the critical lobs, line of businesses, uh, hotels, moved it on the cloud, uh, used our data center as a backup. And uh, trust me, the backup actually helped because we needed a fallback. Initially, things do go wrong, so plan that way. Uh, but once the first set of migration was done, we were through. So we started the migration in October of last year. March 31st, we were completely done, fully 100% migrated on AWS. So uh, excellent experience. Uh, a lot of hand-holding happened by the AWS partners, AWS employees, and uh, the domain experts, uh, even connecting us and having us work with the best implementation partners that they could recommend. Benefits I have talked about already. Uh, but the biggest benefit I now see is that I have liberated my entire engineering team to do more experiments. And more experimentation means more innovation. Well, they were previously held back because they couldn't spin up and spin down uh, the servers. Now they are free to do that at will. So that's the biggest benefit. For someone like me and my team, a lot of bandwidth that we were investing in uh, you know, managing the data center, that is now free to, do on, to spend on other stuff. So I see that as one of the biggest benefits. I mean, Cost so far has not been a consideration for us, frankly. Uh, we have just started the optimization exercise. But just the fact that we are liberated from something that is not our core competency, let's focus on the business and not on the infra. That has been the main motivation. 
the summary in numbers here, uh, I'll leave it for two seconds and then move on. I'll show you some more uh, metrics uh, from the way we monitor. The lower graph is the AWS. You can see the latency is coming down by 50 to 70 percent. One example is from hotels, one from flights. Uh, Again, coming back to this one, because a lot of what we are doing going forward is on the data and the data science front. Data science team is now completely liberated. They are doing their own experiments using a lot of services on the cloud available from AWS. Uh, we have a few models in deployment today in production, uh, but next year I'm sure we will have at least 10 times, if not more, of these models deployed in production talked enough about data. This is the suite of AWS products that we are using. You can see most of the usage and most of the interest at least, I mean the usage is all across, but most of the interest is in the data and analytics and the AI ML front where we want to do more and more uh, models in production going forward. That's pretty much has been our journey so far. So far so good. And uh, for someone like me, there are two big benefits. First of all, I have to spend less time thinking about infra and hardware and operations. I, have, I can focus more of my time and my team's time uh, on the real problems and the market growth and capturing that growth going forward. Thank you, and uh, if you need any questions, if you have any questions, I'm in the audience for the next few hours. Thank you.